Back in the early 80s, there was a time when two bands named Slayer coexisted. One band was based out of Los Angeles, and it's the Slayer that most people are familiar with, while the other Slayer was based out of San Antonio, Texas. Both bands, though, shared striking similarities. They both played thrash metal, featured two lead guitarists, and they both formed in 1981 and released albums literally around the same time. Not only that, but both bands played together on the same bill. One band would go on to dominate the metal world, while the other would fall apart. The San Antonio based Slayer, or SA Slayer as they're known as, consisted of Chris Kronk on vocals, Robert Catlin and Art Villarreal on dual lead guitars, Don Van Stavern on bass, and Dave McLean on drums. The band's influences included Iron Maiden and Judas Priest, and in fact the SA Slayer opened for Metallica during their tour of Texas in 1983. Robert Catlin would tell the San Antonio Current about the band revealing, we were real show-offs. The double lead thing was really what grabbed us by the nut and was probably our second claim to fame after the super high vocals. That was always part of the formula. Double leads, high vocals, double bass drum kit he'd say. Prior to releasing their first EP, Kronk was replaced by Steve Cooper and Villarreal was replaced by Ron Jarzombic. It wasn't long before SA Slayer became one of the most popular bands in the Texas metal scene. They would sign a record deal with indie label Rainforest Records, who was supposed to put out their first release, an EP titled Prepare to Die. It was around this time though the band ran into trouble with their label, who simply sat on the EP for six months. It's not clear why nothing happened with the EP, but one source claims it was the fact that the label knew about the other Slayer in Los Angeles who was on a bigger label and worried about a possible lawsuit. Catlin would tell the same publication. The whole Slayer controversy has to do with, I'd say diplomatically, mismanagement on Rainforest Records. The EP was finished and it sat waiting to get pressed for six months. In that ensuing six months, the famous Slayer put out their first record, but ours would have come out first and it would have changed everything, but it didn't, so theirs did. LA Slayer, or the Slayer we're all familiar with, would release their first LP, Show No Mercy, in December of 1983. Months after SA Slayer's EP was finished, SA Slayer would go on to find a new label to distribute the album, but it was too late. It was around the time that Prepare to Die came out that the San Antonio Slayer got a cease and desist letter from the LA Slayer's label, Metal Blade Records. With the threat of legal action looming over their head, they changed their name to SA Slayer, short for San Antonio Slayer but it didn't matter because the band would soon enough break up after its members pursued other musical projects. But who was in the right? In the 2009 book The Bloody Reign of Slayer, Doug Goodman, who was Slayer's original tour manager, feared that the San Antonio Slayer could have been catastrophic to the metal band's career, telling the author, nobody ever gives the San Antonio Slayer credit for the fact that they own the name. They could have made a big stink about it, they own the copyright on the name and LA Slayer didn't have any money, but what San Antonio Slayer did was they looked around and realized that nobody gave a shit about them and everybody thought LA Slayer was great. But that wasn't the end of SA Slayer. They would share the stage with the LA Slayer at a gig in San Antonio a few months after the band broke up. There is in fact a bootleg floating around on YouTube for you guys to check out. I've included the link down below. Built as the Slayer vs Slayer gig, it was organized by a booking company founded by two high school students who were trying to attract national metal acts to the San Antonio music scene while having local bands open for them. When the gig happened, Catlin was working as an employee of a local record store where LA Slayer had actually stopped by. He would in fact party with the other Slayer band for the day and he would tell the San Antonio Current. Later that afternoon, Kerry King looks at his watch and proclaims to his bandmate, well, I guess it's time to go downtown and meet this other effing Slayer band. He looks me right in the eye and goes, what do you know about him? I said, well, I'm the original guitar player. Jeff Hanneman looks at me and goes, but you're cool. And I said, man, we're all cool. Y'all won, we lost, it's over. So these guys kind of freak out because they were expecting all this aggro BS, but the fact that I had spent the whole day with them kind of diffused all of that. And here it is almost 31 years later and people still talk about that gig. So is Catlin bitter after all these years? Well, he would tell the current that he is not bitter in fact, he's proud to have street cred revealing, as we were walking off stage, somebody jumped on my back, licked my ear and yelled, you guys kicked ass, you guys kicked ass. I threw off that said person, all UFC style, and it was Jeff Hanneman from Slayer. I didn't know too many people that can brag about giving a suplex to a cool guy from Slayer, he'd say. The members of SA Slayer would go on to pursue other musical projects, while in 2018, Slayer frontman Tom Araya would commemorate the infamous gig by wearing a t-shirt on stage during a concert in San Antonio. 
That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe. We'll see you again at Rock and Roll Stories. Take care.